Good evening, everybody. I apologize. I know I keep promising I'm going to learn OBS and make better quality videos. I'm just going to do a little squirt here, a quick little thing on racism. Um, I, I, I want to make an important point, uh, you know, an idea that I think is, is at the nut of this whole thing happening now. Um, and a key uh, notion also to be able to um, continue or take off on a, on a, on a better traje trajectory, a, a, a better way of going about it, holding this idea, uh, this key notion at the center of our, of, um, of why, why we think the things uh, that we think and what we may propose as a course of action. So, I'm going to first ask um, a simple question, which is, what do you believe is racism? What to you is racism? Uh, we got to all agree on, on this word. Um, and so I'm going to ask, I'm going to say, for example, uh, I share an apartment with, uh, with an African-American friend, and he comes home from, from a job interview, and he said, and he got a really good job. And he starts, you know, belting out a Shaka Khan victory song, and starts doing a sang song and dance number, you know, in the middle of the living room. And I'm like trying to do my homework or trying to watch something on my la on my notebook. And I say, "Stop being so black, right? Is that racist? Is that racist to you?" Now let's take a different scenario. Let's. Um, Let's say that we're having an argument, again, my roommate and me with our neighbor. And he's upset because our dog or my dog went and, and took a crap on his lawn and he has the audacity to, to uh, stomp onto my, our front porch and, you know, yell at us, you know. And so we're like totally uh, indignified. We can't believe that this man has, does not knock on the door or anything, but just, okay. So, um, he, you know, I'm like about to start saying something to him or about to appease him or something. And my friend says, uh, starts, you know, telling him off and, and insulting him and saying, you better, you know, why don't you think about your own kind of, you know, calling him on his own shit and just really denigrating and insulting him and, uh, kind of escalating the situation because this man now starts, oh, you guy, I'm going to call the police now, and blah, 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 just blows out of control. And my friend just turns, I don't care, let them, let him call the police, you know, and I'm like, dude, I have a warrant, you know, what are you doing? And, um, and I get upset at my friend, and I said, you're being so black. Is that racist? Okay, the answer is, the first time, it wasn't racist. Why wasn't it racist? Because I was celebrating, I was exalting something of common culture. We all like Shaka Khan, and we all like to dance. And yeah, it is known that, that at least in America, uh, African Americans seem to have a knack for dance, a cultural thing that has been passed down through generations. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a compliment that has to do with anybody. It could be a compliment for anybody. The second one, I'm... What I'm actually suggesting is that he's being ignorant, that he's uh, being uh, thoughtless and careless, and he doesn't care about what he's doing, and he's just being, you know. And that one was racist. Now, what does this tell us? What this tells us is that racism based on our skin color doesn't actually exist. What does exist is how we apply the notion of our skin, of what we look like in, in, our, in our cultures and to, we pass down through our societies. And the proof of this is children. Children um, do not try to avoid <laughs> noticing the other uh, person's color. We do that because we're already saturated with connotations and, and notions and the semantics of language in America in particular. If you go, for example, 
to a country like Brazil or Argentina, or many most Hispanic countries, and I probably a whole bunch of other languages, countries that I don't, I'm not familiar with. Um, you know, saying that somebody is black is like mi negro. Mi negro is totally affect. It's is a is a is a, a pseudonym of friendship, of love. Like you're, I'm personal and intimate with you. You're mine. And in America, immediately in America, they say, oh, you're mine. What it means is slavery then. It comes from slavery, does it? And that's what we would think. So the conditioning, the, what really makes this, the racism is what it's charged with. And there's just no way of really forcing that to change. It, it gets built up, you know. It's, it's sort of what I got, somebody else meant when I was younger. And they learned it from things that are still in the movies, that are... You know, old folks are still saying, and it becomes how we speak, and then we transmit that to the younger generations. It's really not something that you can say, okay, don't say this, don't do that, and very easily it gets applied. Now, uh, it stands out like a like like a, a screaming sore thumb when you can clearly see the police apply all that charge, all that cultural prejudice to the visual of a, an American that is of African skin. And so we can't help, but it is racist, you want to say. But what happens? What happens is that we identify it as racist, and immediately, without even thinking about it, what we're doing is we're continuing, we're propagating the notion that America is a country of two groups of people, defined by the color of their skin and before you know it people are leaning and we owe you and leaning with their knee and we owe you and da 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 and this whole thing happens that is actually perpetuating the conditions or the the instruments through which to propagate the actual content which is harmful which is what we think about how we charge it, why we say it, why we apply it. This is really where we hurt each other, where we offend each other, where we uh, attack the humanity of each other. And so this is the, this is the catch. It's the catch-22. While we're all making this about, <laughs> um, you know, police racism and about racism still going on in America and, and with every time we say the word we're we're you know making sure that it continues to be uh, these two groups of people we are overlooking the actual real problem which is the hate the anger the frustration with which the police have increasingly been unleashing venting against people against regular people against whoever Whoever crosses their path, they'll take him down and kill him. It's that is the real outrageous problem that has been raging and getting worse and worse and worse to where we see people get clobbered. That poor guy screaming, don't kill me, don't kill me, doing everything that the guy said in the hotel room in Vegas. And he shot him anyways because, because we are hiring, uh, just teaching them how to use guns and teaching them how to... Uh, enact protocol against blanks, against dummies. We're not thinking, we're not teaching the police to interact with people which could have any sort of reaction. And, and they have to understand if they're in a hotel or they're in Vegas or it's a young person or if it's somebody who was totally comfortable and relaxed and all of a sudden he's shocked by the presence of a police, their mind might do something. You know, they don't understand any of that. Vanessa Marquez, they killed her. They killed that girl. That girl needed help. She was she was a frail little thing, and they came in with twelve officers, and you know that whole apparatus of of treating the citizen through protocol and procedure, and that's and my own use of the word citizen is not doing justice to what I'm trying to explain. Vanessa Marquez needed people to really bring her down, professionals that were kind, bring some family in, somebody that, you know, really got her to see that she has some issues, that she can't take the, the loss, uh, the, the star, you know, this happens in Hollywood a lot, people uh, find all of a sudden instant stardom, 
and fame and before they know it they are surrounded by people that want to use them and they have all this money and it was all psychological and these police brutally came into that situation and in all true definition they just killed her because of ignorance because of their brutality and this is the brutality that we're talking about not a brutality that says people are brutal against races that doesn't say anything it doesn't address the problem that has been getting honed in the system of uh, the judicial system the police through these uh through america becoming trying to get harder and tougher on on criminality instead of healing society seeing where the problems were being born what kinds of problems psychological bonding problems in the family were allowing us to be fertile ground for vice and and all the immigration and the needing to be tough and not wanting to feel discrimination and so belonging to a gang and the availability of guns like it like it's a glass of water all these things we don't want to look at <laughs> and these are the reasons instead the police go about like they're in a hunting expedition in Africa trying to see could that be a guilty person could that be somebody we could arrest and do we have all the protocol that would fit that okay let's make let's get our job you know going we got to earn that paycheck so we're not really looking at how the, all this is happening and saying that it's about black and white America still it's covering it all this up it's just con, you know perpetuating our ignorance in our and our ability to tackle the this this severe this intense huge problem that the country is having with our hands we can't put our hands in it. We can't start self-acknowledging, looking at when it started with this uh, district general attorney, whatever, the Nixon era and all that stuff, all that material is out there for people to investigate and see how it gradually, we got to the point where we're giving the police war hardware and they were teaching them to act against the citizens like, like they're at war and they don't even see it themselves. Have you ever, has anybody, uh, any police officer ever said, Oh, I, I think we're, we're we're treating our citizens like like they're soldiers in Vietnam. They're no, we're not treating them like people. We're not understanding the situation. Why don't doesn't one of them utter those words and and self acknowledge? It's all part of the issue of the problem. What we should be talking about? How come they're not able to break themselves out of this? How come they're also contained and rigid? And are we not making it worse by accusing them of being evil, racist people when they're just being racist like humanity has always had, a, had problems with not being unkind and mean and using the, your, your fat or your, your Chinese, your yellow or your Jewish or whatever it is that I can insult you easily with. And really what it is, it's about the mean charge that we, lo you know, <sighs> anyways, so I hope I got the point across. This is very uh, central. It is the 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 um, how can you say the part of the seed, the, the the part that becomes the tree. It's really where if we don't get this right, we build, which is something another issue that needs to be you know it's happening in sexuality. Uh, if we start believing things configured or the footing set in these places, and from there we build logic, it exponentially becomes a, a creation, a deconstructivist, <laughs> modernist uh, defiguration of logic because we, we started on the wrong, in the wrong place and then it just gets worse and worse and worse and, and every time we try to make it hold, we try to get that tower to continue making sense as we build forward with it and we compensate so that it doesn't seem too ridiculous although we're getting an intuitive sense that this is no longer holding but we have to continue making it make sense. And so we continue to build absurdities, absurdities to hold up that tower that was simply started on the wrong foundation of logic and reasoning and, and, and human understanding. So this is, this is something to look at in a lot of areas in, in, in our culture, uh, in sexuality and gender and, and how we think of racism in a bunch of places. Uh, um, in all of humanity, this is very important to start in the right place our, because we're becoming so complexly enormous with communications and educating massively so many people to believe uh, at a high level 
uh, conceptual, um, you know, philosophical ideologies, and we're all throwing about this, these big ideas and then affecting enormous our, our judgment and our reasoning upon enormous quantities of, quantities of people without even realizing it. Uh, we really need to be, try to be a little more careful and, and, and be able to pull back and say, okay, we're probably mistaken, pull back. We're probably mistaken, let's go back. We're probably mistaken. We, uh, humanity really needs to learn how to do this. Uh, you know, our logic is, is always uh, fails us. We're not capable of this, of holding this incredible intelligence. We still think that we can go to Mars. By the way, Elon. Anyways, call me, okay? I, we gotta talk. So, anyways. Arrivederci. <laughs>